This conference will now be recorded. Thank you, Stacy. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to read Proverbs uh, 27, no, 29, beginning at verse 1. Proverbs 29, verse 1. All right. And it reads, a man who remains stiff-necked after many rebukes will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. When the righteous strive, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. A man who loves wisdom brings joy to his father, but a companion of prostitutes swindles his wealth. Amen to the word of God. Let's pray. Lord, we humble ourselves before you and we come before your throne, thanking you for all your love and for your kindness. As we read your word, Lord, if we apply it in our life, that we do what you ask us to do, and not throw our wealth away, Lord, and like pearls or swine that trample on them. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to do what you ask us to do. We praise you. We lift you up. We thank you for this day, this moment that we have, that we can come and thank you for all that you do. Restore us. Renew us. Revive us. If there are those of us that are down, I'm asking you to lift them up through the power of the Holy Spirit. Lift up our countenance, God, our mindset, our thought process, that whatever we do, we give you praise. Help us in our Bible study tonight that we'll find some things in there that will help us to be better for you. We thank you for all that you do. We love you. We honor you. We give you the highest praise. Bless those that are sick, going through trials of life. Lord, with you, we know that all things are possible. You can help us. We just want to say we thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. How's everybody doing tonight? Very good. Very good. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But I'm gonna do I'm gonna do something uh, different tonight, something I do a lot. Uh so do everybody do me a favor if you could just uh Shut your eyes for a minute. Close your eyes, Shethe. You can close your eyes and you can sit up straight. I'm gonna do we're gonna do a breathing exercise. Hmm. It's gonna take us about a minute or so, but I want you to uh, if you can as much as you can sit up straight. Uh place your hands on your leg, on your on your lap, and then I want you to just breathe in and breathe out. And this is called the mindfulness moment, and what we want to do is focus on our breathing. We focus on our mindfulness and where we are. And you breathe in and breathe out of your nose. Breathe in your nose and breathe out of your mouth. And just allow your body to relax for a minute. Breathe in and breathe out. Allow your body just to relax. And then I want you to take your right hand as you're focusing on your breathing. And I want you to put your right hand on your heart. I want you to feel your heartbeat. As you're breathing and you're focusing on the breathing, you're listening to your heartbeat. And then I want you to take your left hand and I want you to place your left hand over your right hand. Feel your heartbeat. Allow yourself to breathe. Focusing on your breathing, allowing yourself to relax. Taking in some deep breath and then breathing out. And then we're going to repeat this. You're going to say, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm healthy. I'm healthy. And I'm healed. I'm healed. We're going to repeat that again. Say, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm healthy. I'm healthy. And I'm healed. And I'm healed. And I'm allowing myself just to relax and I'm listening to my heartbeat and I'm listening to the words I'm saying to myself. And I'm meditating on those words because I believe that God wants us to be happy, healthy, and healed. 
And then now we're going to take that right hand, we're going to lay it down back on our, our, our the left hand, shall I say? We're going to lay it on our left uh, thigh or our leg. We're going to take that that right hand, we're going to let that lay down on our right leg. And then we're going to come back to where we are. And you can open your eyes at your at, the, at your appointed time. And then we're going to get ready to continue our discussion about tithing. I hope that you were able to take a moment to relax and allow yourself to just relax and get ready for our, our session tonight. I'm going to try to end tonight. And so, uh, Stacy, if you can pull up the screen for the lesson that we had. And what is tithing? And we can go through the the first uh, PowerPoint presentation. And we see, uh, and I just want to go over the, the the definition of tithing. And the definition of tithing, uh, you can read it for yourself. I can read it. But I'll read it for you anyway. The tithing is, is a term commonly used today to mean setting aside a certain amount of one's income for God. That's what it says, someone's income for God. Typically, a tithe refers to a tenth of one's income because the word literally means tenth. Tenth, the word tithe literally means tenth. But it's often generalized to mean any amount set, for, set aside for God. This money is traditionally given to the local church. The roots of tithing are found in the Bible. The roots of tithing are found in the Bible. And we know from last week, we went over some, uh, some scriptures. And who can talk? Who can tell me a little bit about the scriptures we talked about last week? Feel free to jump in at any time. There's no right or wrong answer. And remember that your your answer, even if you don't get it right, uh, you know, we, we will definitely go over and make sure that we're all on the same page. What was the question again? Uh, who can remember some of the scriptures we talked about in tithing and, and and who can remember what some of those scriptures were that we talked about in tithing? Well, let me ask, let me see if I can go a little bit deep. Let me see if I can go just different. Where did tithing begin? Old Genesis. Bring up the answer. In Genesis. Genesis chapter four, verses one through seven, and uh, and that's where we know that Cain and Abel brought a tenth of their portions to the Lord, and we know that one was uh, was accepted by the Lord and one wasn't. Uh, go to the next slide, Stacy. Genesis twenty-eight. Jacob made a vow of a tenth. To the Lord, Genesis chapter 28, verses 20 through 22. And let's go to the next slide, Stace. Then we also go to Exodus chapter 35, verses 1 through 35. We know that they were building the temple. And uh, and, and one thing I want to say about this, if we go from Exodus all the way, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Moses is given the laws. Moses has this uh, experience with the Lord. And Moses begins to define the laws and everything else. And so Moses is the one who's actually giving a lot of direction for those who are uh, building the temple and things like that. And uh, if you remember in Exodus 35, it says, for what you have, the command was take an offering for what you have uh, for the Lord. Everyone who was willing to bring, everyone knows this word, everyone who was willing to bring the Lord an offering of gold, silver, and bronze. Uh, verse 5, then we go to verse 22, it says, all who were willing, men and women alike, came and brought gold, jewelry of all kinds, brooches and earrings and ornaments. And then verse 31, it says, and he filled him with the spirit of God, with wisdom and understanding, with knowledge and with all kinds of skills. So as they brought their tithe to the Lord of all the things, gold, silver, bronze, even the money, the Lord filled them with the spirit. In verse 35, says, he has filled them with skill also to do all kinds of work as engravers, designers, embroiderers in blue, purple, and scarlet, yarn, and fine linen, and weaving, all of them skilled and designers. And I wanted to say something about this because as we give to the Lord, God gives us visions and all kinds of stuff. And I, and I talked about last week how some people who are giving to the Lord, 
out of their tithe, their tenth, or whatever they decide they placed in their heart to give to the Lord, God has birthed different things in their lives, whether it be businesses and all kinds of things. And for some of you that, you know, have gotten into business and stuff like that, the Lord is, because of your faithfulness, God gives you those visions and those ideas to plant those businesses. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, and then we go to the next slide, Stacey. After God freed the Israelites from Egyptian captivity, they wandered in the desert for 40 years. During this time, their leader, Moses, passed along laws from God. These laws were intended to separate the Israelites from other nations as God's chosen people. The concept of offering first fruits grew into offering God a tithe or a tenth of one's income. Leviticus 27.30 says, A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. These gifts were a reminder that everything belonged to God and a portion was given back to God to thank him for what he and for what uh, they had received. And so remember, this is the Old Testament. We're talking about the Levitical tithe. Uh, for those of you that, that weren't familiar with that, and I mentioned this, the Levitical tithe, and it was mentioned earlier. And this is what, these are the, the laws and everything that uh, God was giving to the children of Israel so that they would have uh, wealth and all the other good things. And so I want to segue a little bit into uh, three different things. There's three types of tithes. Uh, one called the Levitical or the sacred tithe found in Numbers chapter 18, verses 21 and 24. And Sister Diane, can you read Numbers 18, 21 through 24? Is that what's on the screen now? No, it's not on the screen, but uh, oh, if you guys okay. have your Bible, it's, it's in Numbers chapter 18, verses 21. Through okay, 24. give me a sec. Give me a sec. Okay. Right. So Numbers what? Chapter 18, verses 21 through 24. Twenty-one through twenty-four. I give to the Levites all the tithes in Israel as their inheritance in return for the work they do while serving at the tent of meeting. From now on, the Israelites must not go near the tent of meeting, or they will bear the consequences of their sin and will die. It is the Levites who are to do the work at the tent of meeting and bear the responsibility for any offenses they commit against it. This is a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. They will receive no inheritance among the Israelites. Instead, I give to the Levites as their inheritance, the tithes that the Israelites present as an offering to the Lord. That is why I said, that is why I said concerning them, they will have no inheritance among the Israelites. No land. Amen. So see, the Lord is telling the children of Israel to give back to the Levites, you know, um, because they didn't have an inheritance. But the Lord, because of the Israelites, you know, they were disobedient and they were looking for a leader. But Moses, all the time after Moses had his experience with the Lord, Moses says, now I'm going to have to lay down some laws. And Moses is now giving the laws from Exodus all the way to Numbers, Deuteronomy, all the way to Deuteronomy. And if you get a chance, look at uh, go from Exodus chapter 2, the birth of Moses all the way to uh, Deuteronomy, and you'll see all that God speaks to the children of Israel and all of the laws that God gives them. And it's too many for me to go over in one, in one session, but um, if you get a chance to read that, you'll find out you will be blessed by what God says and what God does uh, through those scriptures. All the way from uh, Exodus chapter 2 all the way uh, to Numbers. Numbers of Leviticus. Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Genesis to Deuteronomy, I'm sorry. Okay, and so this is the first, and you know with the first tithe is, is traced all the way back to uh, Genesis uh, chapter four. And then the second tithe is mentioned in Deuteronomy, which is the tithe of feast. And can someone, Sister Michelle, can you find Deuteronomy chapter 14, verses 22 through 27?
Jadi ubi apa? Mian macam ni. You wear it off, Steve. Okay. All right. So today, no, no, you you nice <laughs> Deuteronomy right what? A fourteen twenty-two through twenty-seven. Deuteronomy fourteen chapter. Uh, verses twenty-two through twenty-seven. Be sure to set aside a tenth of all that your fields produce each year. Eat the tithe of your grain, new wine and oil, and the firstborn of your herds and flocks in the presence of the Lord your God at the place he will choose as a dwelling for his name, so that you may learn to revere the Lord your God always. And 24 says, but if that place is too distant and you have been blessed by the Lord your God and cannot carry your tithe because the place where the Lord will choose to put his name is so far away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Says, then exchange your tithe for silver and take the silver with you and go to the place the Lord your God will choose. Go on. Use the silver to buy whatever you like, cattle, sheep, wine, or other fermented drink or anything you wish. Then you and your household shall eat there in the presence of the Lord your God and rejoice. And do not neglect the Levites living in your towns, for they have no allotment or inheritance of their own. Wow. So we, hear, so we see here that they're constantly, the tithe is constantly mentioned about giving back to the Lord and how God's going to bless, uh, bless them for giving the tithe. And Sister Diane, if you can uh, read the last two verses, 20, 28 and 29. At the end of every three years, bring all the tithes of that year's produce and store it in your towns so that the Levites who have no allotment or inheritance of their own and the foreigners, the fatherless and the widows who live in your towns may come and eat and be satisfied. And so that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. Now watch this. This is what's really interesting about this. It's here the Lord says, bring in the tithe. Watch this. So that the tithe can be given to the who? Who did, who did the Lord say would be blessed because of the tithe? Yeah. The Levites, the fatherless, the widows, the foreigners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 so what is if the church then is the uh is the avenue then we should be willing to give our tithe. Why? Because we should be willing to reach out. And let's say uh, the widows, the orphans, um, how many actually think about widows when you're giving your tithe? <laughs> I mean, think about the, poor, the, the, the unfortunate, the single mothers, the, the children, the homeless, and all those things. So as we give to the Lord, we bring it back to the Lord, into the Lord's house, into the local church, and I'm going to specifically focus on the local church, then this is how God can use the local church to reach out to all of those who are less fortunate. Mm -hmm. do, do you guys, do, do you who, who get how I'm Levi correlating Steve? that? Does, Steve? Anyone, does everyone understand my correlation? Yeah, I do. Okay, all right, okay. So now let's go back to our uh, presentation. Steve. Yeah. Before you go, who who are the Levites? Who is that? that no. Okay, the unbelievers. No, 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 not the unbelievers. It's not the Levites. Mm -hmm. The Levites are the priests. The priests. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so okay. What I want to make a point here is that they were telling the. Uh, Telling Israelites to take care of the priest. They really said because the priest or the Levites have no inheritance. That means that they have uh -huh. basically not given any portion of land. Therefore, right. they were to be cared for by the people. Yes. I just yes, need yes, to make you. that statement. Okay. Thank you for that. Right. And 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 watch this. Uh, and I want to add on to that, Pastor. Um, 
I want to use today the, uh, I'm, I'm just going to use this example. The leaders of the church, the leaders of the uh, congregations, and we're going to, and I'm, gonna, I'm not saying that the pastors are not, don't receive any inheritance, anything like that. What I'm saying, I'm just using the, a, a correlation here that um, the leaders of the congregations are the ones who lead us into our life, right? And they give us direction and all those things. So shouldn't we also be willing to bless those who bless us? Come on, y'all. Amen. 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 Thank you, Diane. Amen. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Notice what I said. Notice what I said. I said I didn't say the pastors were Levites, or but the leaders, the pastors, the ones who God puts to direct us and encourage us and guide us and pray for us and all those things. Shouldn't we, as believers, be willing to give to yeah. them? And I didn't say you had to pay them or nothing like that. But I'm saying, but as Bless as them. a as as a note of thankfulness, being yes. thankful and grateful. Not only to the Lord, because we're giving God first, but also we should be willing to share with those who um, who share with us. I think there's a scripture that says, muzzle not the ox that treads upon the corn. Um, there's a scripture that said that. Yes, and I, I, don't, I don't remember where it's at. But it's in there. But uh, there's a scripture that says that. Now, and I'll find it for you. Uh, so, so next portion of the presentation, basically the next, the next, um, the next screen. I think he's good. Okay. So the question, should my tithe go to the local church? Um, your tithe should go to the local church because we are giving back to who? God. You, you all work with me now. We're giving back to who? I heard the pastor, but I just want to make sure about <laughs> yeah. God. God. Thank We're you. giving back to God. Yes. And, uh, and Sister Cherry, you, you gave an example yesterday. Uh, just obedience. Because we're being obedient to God, we're giving to the local church because we're being giving to the Lord, and the Lord is using the body, the local church, to uh, to do the things that he needs to do. Bless Your tithe should go to the local church because we're giving back to God for what he has given us. Proverbs 3, 9 says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with, your, with the first fruit of all your produce. Christians give 10% of their fruits, first fruits, to the local church as an act of surrender to God. Again, tithe refers to giving money. Many define tithes as giving of a tenth of our income to the local church, but does this need to be strictly followed? Now, notice the question. We should look at God's word to see what he says about tithe and where it should go. I'm holding my, my small candle because my big one's not working with that. So if you see me uh, moving, don't worry. So tithe, again, I'm going to reiterate, tithe refers to giving money. Many define tithe as giving 10% of our income to the local church. But does this, ne this need to be strictly followed? We should look at God's word to see what this uh, tithe means and where it should go. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Um, everyone must give, and this, now that's the Old Testament, right? So we're under, uh, we're under the Old Testament law. Now we're going to look at the New Testament because the Old Testament refers to specifically to the 10%. But now we're going to go to the New Testament uh, where we're no longer under the law, but under grace. And so when we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and here's what it says. Everyone must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly nor under compulsion, for God loves the what? Cheerful giver. Cheerful giver. So as I have purposed in my heart to give, even though we set the standard based on Old Testament, and we follow that through the Old Testament and the law, but now we're under grace. And so we get to the New Testament, I mean, I mean, now we're under grace, and the New Testament says here, the heart behind giving is explained in 2 Corinthians. We do not give out of compulsion, but with cheer in our heart, since we are simply giving to God a percent of what he's given to us. And do we have to stop at that 10%? Do we have no. to go to that 10% based upon uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 7? That's a question um, for everybody. 
Because look at the scripture. Here's what it says. Mm -hmm. Each one must give as he is decided in his heart. Mm -hmm. Not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. So under Old Testament laws, and we set the standard under Old Testament laws and stuff, he said, we'll give a 10% because that was given in the Old Testament. Under grace, we're, we, we give as we as we decided in our heart, but we set a uh, standard. You know, that's what I said, set a standard of 10%. But we don't have to stop at 10%. We can actually give more than 10%. Or guess what? What if we don't give 10%? Are we a cheerful giver? I think Pastor talked last week about, and he gave some examples of the person who lost their job and who was able to give 10%, and then all of a sudden they lost their job, and now they don't have the things that they used to have, but they come cheerfully giving that penny. There's an example of a, a widow mm -hmm. who gave her, who gave all that she had. It doesn't say she gave 10%, but it said gave all she had. And maybe that wasn't 10% of her income, but she gave all that she had. And she gave with a cheerful heart. And then the Lord acknowledged her for what she gave. And the Lord acknowledges you and I for what we give. And I'm going to reiterate this. We, under the Old Testament laws, we give as a standard of 10%. But we ought to give cheerfully as we've desired and as we've decided in our heart. Without reluctance or under compulsion. In other words, meaning that, okay, just because pastor says give, now I got to give. But, but watch this, though. I should give when I know that the church is doing the work of the Lord. Yeah. So I want to I want to say when we look at Second uh, Corinthians on this. I think that some of what the teaching is trying to help us to say, you know, we, may, we need to make a decision. A lot of times when we make decisions to give, we wait till we get to church. Mm -hmm. And then we decide what we're going to give. But we really should make our decisions at home because we've thought about what we're going to give. And right. in thinking about what we give, we're giving this cheerfully. So we're saying, you know, I'm going to give. This is my cheerful giving to the Lord. And I'm not mm -hmm. waiting until I get to church. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to give. Uh, you know, we're making decisions like that versus sitting down. Saying, Lord, this is what I have. This is this is my gift, or this is my tithe, or this is my offering of uh, that I'm giving to you. I've decided in my heart, and I'm giving it cheerfully and happily. Mm -hmm. Is everyone anybody have any questions on that? I have a question. Um, yeah. Is is tithing only money? Or can you use it like your time that you devote to the church or your talents that you devote to the church? Um, yes. you know, because I, I heard some someone say one day that we should give God 10% of our time. So like every day we should give God 10% of our 24 hours. Yeah. You know, being that in like, um, like a devotional period, praying or doing the work of the ministry and yeah. so like, if we gave 10 percent of our time i think the church would be powerful yes man Ooh, man <laughs> can you imagine you can you imagine powerful. this man, man so Diane, you said something that is, is just so significant uh we always think of tithing we always refer to money you know, and, and that's the and when we and when we hear tithe, that's the first thing we stop. And as soon as we hear tithe, we think money, and therefore we shut down because I ain't giving all my money. Mm -hmm. You know, but what about our time? What about our talent? You know, um, what about what about if we have 24 hours in the day, and we say 10% of 24 hours is two hours and 40 minutes? How many of us? How how many of us? Just let's say we're we're going for the 10%. Let's use that as a measuring rod. God bless. Just to use that as a measuring rod. Um, how much time do we give to the Lord on a daily basis? We get 24 hours in a day. How much time do we give to the Lord? I give an hour and a half. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to, now I better add to that, huh? 
<laughs> amen. Amen. Right. Amen. If the Lord, watch this. And let me say, yes, yes, the Lord, that's what the Lord put on your heart. Because it says we shouldn't give, listen to what it says. Let a man give as he decided in his heart, a man or woman, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So God loves when we give him our time, our talent, and our treasures. Right. No, but we always, we always, again, always referring to money. But what about our time? How much? How many of you spend? You can answer. I mean, you might, it's no, it's nothing to be no wrong or right answer or something. But how many of us spend an hour with the Lord a day? I can't see your hands, but if you could just say yay, 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 yeah, 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 at least, yeah. You, you spend a straight hour with the Lord, just you and the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Yes. Uh, right. Yeah. Now, watch. It doesn't have to be an hour straight, but sometimes you can break that up in a day. Yeah. You know, you get up in the morning, <clears throat> you spend 20 minutes or 30 minutes with the Lord. You go through your day, you spend some time with the Lord. You come home, you spend some time with the Lord. You go at night, you, you get you're ready to get into bed, you spend some time with the Lord in His Word, uh, meditating on the Lord, uh, just thanking God for all that He has done. I mean, that's all that's all tithing back to the Lord. Now what about let's say time? What about your treasure? Your or your talent? Um mm-hmm. how many have a talent that we can use and we can give back to the Lord? What about intercessory prayer? You know, God has called you to pray and you spend that time interceding on someone else's behalf. What about uh, a music? You have you're musically inclined. What about a gift that God has given you? You spend that time giving that gift back to the Lord. Because you're giving to the Lord, God's giving you a gift, God's giving you a vision. And now you take that vision and you give and you give back to those who are in need. Let me say, uh, I think that if we look at it real closely, if you're having problems with giving or with tithing, my encouragement to you is to spend more time just you and God. If you spend more time with you and God, you'll find yourself that the money won't matter as much as before. It is the right. time with God. It's the, it is the fellowship and the relationship with God that you yes. will see how awesome he is. And you will, you'll be willing to give him everything you have because you understand the importance of the relationship with him. So, you know, I right. want to make sure you understand that's why you know, you will, then you will come to the place of deciding in your heart what to give. Because of the relationship I have with him, I can make a better decision on what I'm going to give because I know yeah. what he's done for me. So, Man, wow, wow. Yeah, that, that's powerful, powerful, powerful. Okay, so um, any, any questions on that? I'd like to um, make a comment or ask the question. Based on what uh, the pastor just said, mm-hmm. um, and I'm I'm talking about my observation at my church. Mm-hmm. Uh, I see that people are willing to give or to do what they really want to do, and I mm-hmm. hear a lot that I don't have the money. But, and I'm speaking of two people I know personally, they'll come and brag about all the stuff that they do, their <laughs> traveling, the clothes and whatever. So, and, and I know there are some people that really don't have it to give, but to me, uh, if you can spend money on unnecessary stuff, does that mean they don't have a really good relationship with God? Um, I can't answer to them because I don't know them, and I don't know their heart. No, I'm just but saying in general, in general. Yeah, and I'm and I'm trying not to generalize that because you, sometimes you make a oh, general statement okay. and get in trouble. So I'm not, I'm okay. trying not to generalize that. <laughs> but I'm going to go back to this scripture and I'm going to say, each one must give as he's decided in his heart. So if they've decided in their heart that that's what they're going to give, then a blessing to them. You know, I, I, I pray that they'd be blessed. You know, I don't I don't pray that they anything wrong. But you know, if there's if that's not in their heart to give, then you know, 
and and they and they're giving out of compulsion or something like that, then God doesn't want He wants us to be cheerful givers. He wants us to give because we've decided in our heart to give. And so um one would question when we see that, you know, okay, well, you know, you're saying you don't have to give, but you have all this other stuff. So we do question, say, okay, so what's really in their heart? You know, and and I would I would say that's between them and the Lord. Let's read Matthew 6 and 21. What does that say? Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to help answer your question, uh, Cherry. Uh, Matthew, Matthew, 6. Matthew 6 and 21. Let's see. Let me get to it. Would someone mm -hmm. care to read that? Hmm? Oh, you want me to Would read, someone that? Care to read that? Oh. Matthew six twenty one. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Now uh, tonight I have the English version. Okay. Okay. Six uh, twenty. Sorry, twenty. Sorry, twenty. At twenty. Yes, okay, ma'am. Nineteen. Gosh, where is twenty? <laughs> I have 19, then 20. Oh, here's 20. Okay, here we go. Instead, store up riches for yourselves in heaven, where moth and rust cannot destroy, and robbers cannot break in and steal. For your heart, uh, verse 21, for your heart will always be where ooh, your riches are. <laughs> wow. <laughs> The eyes, did you say 22 too? That's enough. No. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and, that is enough. Okay. This is Jerry, I, just, I, I like, I like that, you, that you've read that version, but I'm going to read one other version just a little, that's a little bit different. It says, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where, where neither moth nor rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So whatever is important to you, mm -hmm. that's where you will spend your money there. Because that's, yes. what, that's where that's where your heart is. So if, if, if this, it's not the things of God is not that important at that time, you can have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. But you can say, remember now, it's just because I have a relationship don't mean he's first place in my life. He in my wow. life. But I can I can choose other things above him because they're more important to me. Yeah. Wow. Good. 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 Okay. Let's let's move forward. Any any, any other questions on that? <laughs> well, okay. Let's go to the next slide. Now, this is really interesting in Proverbs eleven twenty four. And here's what this says. It says, one gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. Hmm. Proverbs, which is one of the books of wisdom in the Bible, suggests that those who give freely will be blessed and the opposite of those who, uh, and the opposite of those who do not give. This verse is not a promise, but wisdom on giving. Mm. Wow, well, look, look, look at what it says again. One who freely gives, mm -hmm. one who gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Watch this. Not just material, not just uh, uh, with money, with money mm -hmm. but, but with wisdom. Because this Proverbs is a book of wisdom. It says, another, it says, yet grows all the richer. Another which holds what he should give and only suffers one. I, I wish I had it. I, I want to be like this, man, but I don't, uh, man, I, oh, man, you know, but, but they're not giving, so they're not growing. Hmm. And therefore, the end of suffering based upon the, the wisdom of Proverbs 11, 24. Hmm. Wow. That's a good yeah. Proverbs, which is one of the books, uh, wisdom books of the Bible, suggests that those who give freely will be blessed, and the opposite of those who do not give. This verse is not a promise, but wisdom on giving. Wisdom on giving. Next verse. 
Uh, next slide, um, Stacy, please. Honor the Lord mm -hmm. with all your wealth, Proverbs 3, 9. Honor the Lord with all your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. We tithe to honor God. Not only should we tithe just anything, but the first fruits of all we have in order to show honor. Mm -hmm. Wow. So we honor God. We give with our first fruits of the things that we have. Tithe, time, and talent. Talent, time, and treasure. Okay. Uh, we give to the Lord. Uh, next. Okay, that's the end of my presentation. I had something else, but I think my, oh, you know, my other presentation uh, kind of erased. But we're going to stop there for tonight because it is 8.20. And so, based upon what we read, it's understood, and are, are we clear that tithe is not just about money? Are we, are we clear that tithe is not just about money? I am. Amen. A a amen, amen, amen. But when we give, we give out of wisdom to the Lord because we want God to be blessed with all that we do. And uh, I really like that last that last uh, uh, scripture. It says, honor the Lord with all your wealth and the first person, no, I'm sorry, going back up one, to 1124, one gives freely yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what you should give and only suffers want. So whatever you decided in, in your heart to give to the Lord, we again, we use as a measuring stick uh, from Old Testament, under the law, we use the 10% tithe. However, under the New Testament, under grace, we give uh, as one desires in his heart. But we still use as the measuring rod the 10%. However, if a person is unable to give that 10%, then that doesn't mean that God doesn't bless them as the one who's able to give 20% or 30%. God still blesses. But it's the heart that one gives, the obedience that we talked about in the beginning. Because we're obedient to the Lord, we give out of our, our time, our talent, and our treasure. Amen? Amen. Okay. Amen. Any, any, anybody else have any comments they want to make on that? Or anything else they want to say? Because I know we got some, some, some time for, uh, we got those who have the, the, uh, the word for today. Anybody? Any agreements, disagreements, issues, uh, questions regarding it at all? Yep. All right. Thank you, Steve, Got so it. much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Diane, who's, who's going tonight? Tonight is Stacy. Stacy, all right. Get it on mute, Stacy. All right. Okay, so my word was uh, goodness. Goodness. So start off with uh, the sixth fruit of the spirit is actually goodness. So in mm -hmm. Galatians 5, 22, 23, it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control against such things there is no law and for me personally uh i found that i take the word um good it kind of loses its meaning as i take it for granted every day you know when i say things like good morning or good luck or good work mm. i'm actually taken away from the actual meaning of the words because the bible tells us that the word good actually means holy pure and righteousness Mm. Uh, you know, goodness is God in this. So, um, I, I, you know, I, I search myself and I'm like, I, you know, I use that word pretty, pretty frequently, but not to what it should be used. Um, and it's some scripture that I found, uh, Psalms 23, 6, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I should dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And uh, what this is saying is the goodness of Christ is to be demonstrated in our lives every day. Amen. 
um, another verse I found, Galatians 6.10. Uh, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Mm-hmm. And my final one was James 1, verse 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Mm. Um, so going back to the spirit, um, the, the, the fruit of the spirit, the goodness described um, as a fruit of the spirit is not merely like a moral behavior, but more of an excellence of character. Mm. And goodness is only possible through God's grace and mercy. I have one more, oh, one more slide. So to finalize it, uh, scriptures in both the New and Old Testament tell us the goodness of God. It is who he is, and he created us to show his goodness to those around us. We can see God's goodness every single day and how he guides us, protects us, and favors us. The goodness of God is a promise that believers can rely on. Amen. That is the end. Yay. Excellent. <laughs> see, now you helped me right there with what I'm going to, have to be careful with that good morning. I don't use the term good luck, but I, I do say good morning, but I got to look at that a little bit as I say, as representing God when I say good morning. I just use it so casually. So I, I like that. Exactly. Yep. Yep. That's very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Thank you for sharing that. That was really, really good. All right. And well, thank you, Steve, also for um, sharing uh, with us on to, uh, about tithing the last, last two weeks. And we give God praise for that. So um, so I know uh, next week uh, and I'm going to be going back to uh, a Bible uh, book, and I'll, I'll share that, start sharing that with you on next week. So we'll, as we uh, get ready for that next week. So hopefully everyone has learned something from what we believe as believers, as Christians. Uh, uh, and then make sure we follow what we believe, hold on to the truth, uh, what the Bible says regarding, and be cheerful, you'll be happy in our lives. I mean, don't be, don't be dull. I, I tell you, um, let, me, let me just share with this. On the other day, uh, uh, everybody knows what my father's going through. Um, so my father called me. Uh, yesterday, and it, I was quite shocked and that he called me. Uh, he's not one for the phone, so and he called me and just was sharing with me. He says, "Look, I just want you you to know that uh, uh, I heard your sermon on on Sunday, and one thing hit me was hope." He says, "I don't want you to think I've given up or don't have hope. I want you to know I have hope." He said, "Because I know what the doctors have said, but God is still in control." And now, when he said that to me, he just really uh, just helped me. I was just so happy to hear him saying that. Uh, and in the midst of this, look, I'm going to go and live. Let me just live until God says so. And when he says so, then I'll go and leave. But right now, he got me living. So I say, all right, okay. So I just give God praise for that. It just uh, cheered my heart. So uh, I just thank God for, for what he's doing. He knows how to cheer us up. Sometimes when we get down, so I just give him praise for that. All right. Okay. Are there any prayer requests on tonight before we go? Pastor Barner. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what's your father's name? If if it's okay with you, I'd like to put him on our prayer list. His name is Robert Lee Barner. Robert Barner. Oh, okay. It's fine. No problem. Love okay. for you to put him on there. He's suffering from uh, stomach cancer. So uh, oh, just, okay. yeah. Pray for okay. him, yes. Yeah, yeah. So thank you. Thank you for adding him to your, to your list. Anybody else? Well, I'm going to ask you all to pray for me. Um, I'm preaching on Saturday this service. Uh, I pray, you know, that I preach the good news of Jesus Christ. You know, I'm going to do that. I want you to pray that I'm able to control this service because uh, there's going to be a lot of people 
you know, that two minute thing, when you say two minutes and take folk one tell, take 10 to 20 minutes to tell their story. Uh, make sure that I, I control the service and not let it get out of hand for the family. So uh, please, I'm praying that y'all uh, ask the Lord to help me to be able to control that in a proper manner. And then give them the gospel. You know, last night I, I woke up with um, just, the uh, Lord really told me, I just need you to make sure you give the people the gospel that, you know, uh, uh, Lorenzo's mother is uh, is just a shell there, but we got to make sure that the people that are still yet alive, living on this earth are given the truth of the gospel. So I want to make sure I, I deliver that. So, so in that, we can pray for the Jackson family also. Hey, Pastor, you know, and if y'all if y'all can remember, pray for the Column family. I, I've shared this, this with column? some of you. I've shared with some of you that I was working with a young man. Uh, only 60, he had stage four cancer and congestive heart failure, and he passed. Okay. You said Collins, Steve? Uh, Collins, C-O-L-O-M. C-O-L-O-M. Okay. All right. All right. Can we add um, Andrew Gibson to the prayer list? Okay. He's... um really having a hard time with his new job and yeah. he at school. And then he was in a car accident last week um, okay. and totaled his car. He got rear-ended, a hit and run. And um, so he's, he's pretty down, having a okay. hard time right now. All right. He lifted him up. Okay. All right. Anybody else? All right. Okay, let's let's look to the Lord. Let's look to the Lord. Let's look to the Lord. Uh, Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We're thanking you for all that you do. You an awesome God. You're great. You're worthy of all of the praise. We come thanking you for the things that you've done for us. But we just thank you for being a God who, who, Lord, knows what you're doing. You do everything well. And you bless us, and we just thank you. You are merciful towards us when we should get justice. We just want to say we thank you for all that you do. We lift you up, and we glorify your wonderful name. Thank you for our Bible study tonight. Thank you for our word, Lord. Thank you for all that you do. And here we are, Lord, acknowledging you and, and praising you and worshiping you. But then we're asking you also, we're asking that you, you help the Columns family, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you give them strength, God, as they've lost their loved one. I'm asking that you help them, Lord. We ask that you look at the Jackson family, Lord, who I know many times there's so many things to do. Lorenzo hasn't had the time to grieve, Lord. He's trying to take care of everything. But I'm asking you, Lord, as he go through the process, Lord, that you let him settle down and grieve, Lord have some tears in the name of Jesus. I just thank you, Lord. I just help us to be there for him. And when he cries, Lord, they won't have to cry alone. Lord, I come praying for the Queens family, one of the young men that was at the, one of the buildings that we managed to pass on last week. Oh, we just ask that you help that family. And we just pray for their family and just strengthen them, God. Help them as they get the, the matters and their affairs in order. We just ask that you keep them, God. Help them to hold on to your unchanging hand. I pray for my father tonight. Thank you for continuing to lifting him up and Lord, allowing him to be encouraging to, to others in the midst of what he's going through. That he looks to you in all things. We want to say we thank you for what you're doing. Lord, I pray for my grandson tonight. I pray for Andrew that you strengthen him, Lord, that in the midst of whatever he's going through, you are working it out for his good. Looks glim, looks hard. Lord, help him to realize, Lord, you are able, Lord. You, he's there for those kids for a reason, Lord. Help him in the name of Jesus. So you can teach him how. And then in the midst of their bad acting, he will be able to calm them down and show them the correct way, Lord. We just thank you for us. He's had an accident, Lord, that you you kept him alive. Yeah. We can get another car, Lord. We just thank you for taking care of him, healing his body. It's hurting, God. In the name of Jesus, I just thank you for what you're doing even right now. Lord, I pray for Yvonne tonight. 
I lift her up, Lord, unspoken request in the name of Jesus. Whatever you see she stand in need of, God, I'm asking, Lord, that you do it right now, God. Help her, Lord, help her, Lord, as you speak to her, Lord. Help her to hear your voice, Lord, and respond to what you say. Thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for, Lord, we pray for those people in Russia, Lord. Help them, Lord, Lord, help the fighting to cease, God. I just ask in the name of Jesus, People, as they go into different countries, Lord, we ask you, Lord, help those folks to be able to receive them and learn. In the name yep. of Jesus, and provide, Lord. We just thank you for all that you do, Lord. We, we know you know what's going on. Lord, we know, Lord. Help us, Lord, that we come back to you, God. And Lord, that we don't stray and do other things that don't look like you. That we come back to you through yep. the love of Jesus Christ in our life. Thank you today, Lord. Bless the rest of our week. Help us, Lord, as we go forward, that we remember others, Lord, and do a kind deed as we pass through this world and through our time, Lord. Thank you for all that you do. Now, I'll be yeah. careful, God, that I take no credit for myself, that I give your name glory, that I give yeah. your name honor, I give you praise for all the wonderful things that you do, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know there's some are going in the surgery, God. I'm asking you to touch their bodies in the name of Jesus. Help God, guide those doctors' hands in the name of Jesus. That in the end, Lord, when it's all over, God, we'll be able to give you the highest praise for all that you do. This is our prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. And everyone said amen. 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 amen and amen. 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 Thank you all so much. We'll see Don't you forget daylight Sunday. savings time on Saturday. Huh? Don't forget daylight savings time on Saturday night. Oh, thank you, Diane. Thank you. Oh, oh, I forgot. We, a, do we go forward or back? We go Bring forward. Bring oh, forward. Yeah. Thank oh, you, Diane. Thank you. All right. Good, Good night, night, everybody. everybody. Good night. Good night.